Elon Musk and the People's Republic of China are two important players in the race to populate Mars. Let's debate about them today. We all know that when Elon started SpaceX 20 years ago, he essentially declared the first refusal on the Red Planet. His plan, which originally called for sending a greenhouse full of plants to the surface, quickly changed and is now a scheme to establish a self-sustaining city of a million people on Mars. This would effectively turn humanity into a multi-planetary civilization and allow us to pass through the Great Filter. Elon Musk and SpaceX are working diligently to construct prototypes of the biggest and most potent rocket ships ever made in order to achieve this. A spacecraft that will travel to Mars carrying people, a ton of stuff. China launched its first astronaut into orbit around the Earth 19 years ago, and since then, the country has advanced to become a global leader in space exploration. In the meantime, the country has been scaling up its space program at an astounding rate. The Chinese advanced to establish their own satellite infrastructure, implement a robot exploration campaign on the moon, design and build a brand new space station, and most recently, they've also set their sights on Mars. In contrast, the old guard of America and Russia largely stagnated in the 21st century. So, we have two players who are extremely affluent and resourceful working toward the same end. What may that appear like in the best case scenario? How does China's vision of Mars differ from Elon Musk's? Let's talk about it. This is Meditech. We'll begin with the Chinese perspective because they aren't as vocal and upfront about their objectives as Elon Musk is. China has already begun construction on what may eventually become their Mars colony, in contrast to Elon Musk. Therefore, there are currently two prototype Mars bases in China. They are both built in isolated regions of the northern desert that uncannily resemble the surface of Mars. They provide a fairly accurate recreation of what life would be like on Mars, similar to how China's Gansu province is home to Mars Base 1. This is the northernmost point of the Gobi Desert, which extends into Mongolia. This is China's first base for simulating Mars, and it resembles a scene right out of a sci-fi film. This facility cost $61 million to construct in 2019. By filming a reality TV show at the Mars facility, where celebrities were prepared by actual Chinese astronauts and scientists to execute imaginary space missions, the Chinese promoted the Mars base. Today, it serves as a tourist and educational hub, basically to encourage the younger generation to pursue a career in space exploration so they can eventually brave the trek to a real Mars outpost. And the simulation framework is quite sophisticated. They have spacious, comfy sleeping quarters, a posh command center with enormous curving screens, indoor wheat farming, and just about all the amenities you could want. With fancy spacesuits, the outside environment is a replica of Mars. A massive exploration vehicle rovers past a crew capsule that has been landed in, strangely enough, a slab of the black monolith from 2001, a space odyssey. Fans of Kubrick should be expected on a project like that. In any case, Mars Base One is the hyped-up version of China's space colonization project. It's more like a themed hotel than anything else, which makes sense if you want to persuade people to fly to Mars with the possibility of dying millions of miles away from home on a cold, dead foreign world. And last, Mars Camp. This is a more practical, realistic interpretation of China's first space colony. One of the most isolated regions of the country, Mars Camp is virtually uninhabited and located even further into the northwest Chinese desert. Even the color of the place is the same shade of red as Mars. Basically a collection of shipping containers that have been pieced together, Mars Camp. Although it doesn't have the high ceilings, bubble domes, or vibrant lighting of Mars Base One, Mars Camp is unquestionably a more accurate depiction of what the first space colony may look like. The location is referred to by the Chinese as a location for scientific education and what they call patriotic training for future explorers. Hence, preparing the following generation to willingly risk their life in space on a historic colonization expedition for the sake of the country. A pretty ambitious strategy for the Chinese presence on Mars has already been put out. Obviously, the Tianwen rover and orbiter mission is already underway 
and it will be followed by a number of additional robotic exploration missions over the next 10 years. China's robot exploration of Mars will focus mostly on gathering samples for analysis and scouting out potential landing spots and bases. China plans to launch the first rudimentary expedition to Mars in 2033, when they anticipate having obtained all the required data. Moreover, this won't just be a case of raising the flag and calling it a day. China plans to resettle humans on Mars in 2035, 2037, 2041, and 2043. There haven't been many details made public, but we do know that the Chinese wanted to send the first trip to Mars using nuclear-powered spacecraft. NASA is also investigating this concept. An onboard nuclear reactor can deliver steady, dependable energy to the crew, and a nuclear thermal rocket engine will be roughly twice as efficient as a conventional chemical rocket. The ambition of China to construct something known as a sky ladder is one extremely intriguing revelation from their Mars plan. In essence, this is a form of space elevator. From the ground up, a physical structure is created that reaches low Earth orbit, and by doing so, you may send mass into orbit without using a rocket engine's enormous amount of energy. The Chinese plan to construct this using the space-age material known as carbon nanotubes, which would clearly require engineering on a level that has never been seen to build something that tall. This substance's structure resembles a collection of nanometer-long tubes consisting of a hexagonal lattice of carbon atoms. It's pretty technical, but the major lesson is that this material can support structures up to several miles in length while also being incredibly strong and light. To put it another way, if the Chinese didn't really intend to send a ton of stuff into space, they wouldn't even be talking about this kind of stuff. Elon Musk is attempting to get the same objective. He intends to utilize a massive, overpowered rocket, rather than a space elevator, to transport his belongings there, but they both have the same idea. To launch mass into orbit for transportation to Mars. And yes, creating a Mars colony. And a space elevator sounds like pure science fiction right now, but you cannot undervalue or underestimate China's capacity for achievement. China is the fastest growing major economy in the world, with annual growth rates over 10% on average during the past 30 years. China has the largest manufacturing sector in the world and exports more items than any other country. China uses half of the metal that is utilized worldwide. And yes, there is a significant cost associated with all of that for both people and the environment. As in many other parts of the world, including our own country of Canada, where there is still ongoing and perplexing mistreatment of the native people whose land was colonized to build this country, there are unquestionably some absolutely terrible violations of human rights and freedoms occurring there. We clearly understand the drawbacks of advancement, therefore there is no denying that. In any case, we have already witnessed how the Chinese space program has benefited from their relentless drive. Probably the best illustration of this is the Tian Gong space station. The Chinese have just begun construction of a brand new space station on their own, while NASA and Russia are still trying to salvage every last bit of usability from their venerable antique. Although the Tian Gong is smaller and less complex than the eyes as on the outside, it will actually have a lot more usable space inside than the ISS, since its modules are bigger in diameter and its equipment is more efficient and compact thanks to current design. Although no such work has actually started, NASA expects to be able to move into a new space station in 2030. They anticipate that this station will be built by a private contractor. We can therefore conclude that China is a real competitor to start populating Mars long before anyone else is able to do the same because they can move quickly, build effectively, and aren't hesitant to step on people to advance. Elon Musk and the SpaceX team are, of course, the only ones preventing a Chinese rule on Mars. As you are all aware, Elon Musk is the richest man in the world and the owner of SpaceX, the most innovative and prosperous aerospace company now in existence. Elon therefore has a lot going for him and has a proven track record of completing tasks. He started out as a broke immigrant developing software firms on his own, working day and night, and sleeping on the floor of his office in the middle of the 1990s. He ultimately got to the point where he could sell his PayPal stock for $180 million. 
At that point, the man might have happily called it quits and retired, but instead he decided to spend his entire new fortune by building out his own Tesla, Solar City, SpaceX, and the restoration of his hair. Elon went out to transform the world with a full head of hair and three startup firms under his care. Elon's strategy ought to have disastrously failed, but it didn't. The man made it happen through sheer force of will. There's really no other explanation aside from him being the luckiest son of a gun to ever walk the earth. This man is a legend. He will spread the light of consciousness to the stars and build a self-sustaining human city on the planet Mars, as if becoming the most prosperous and successful businessman in the world wasn't enough for his magnum opus. You can't undervalue this guy, even though it seems like science fiction. Sadly, Elon has provided very little information about his actual Mars colony. If we want to properly self-sustain the base on Mars, we know that his goal is to transfer around 1 million metric tons of cargo from the Earth to Mars. The statement implies that Mars would survive indefinitely, even if supplies from the Earth were to totally cease. And SpaceX is constructing the Starship to achieve this. The first rocket ever built that could send more than 100 metric tons into orbit around the planet. Elon wants to operate a fleet of more than 1,000 of these ships that are always traveling between the Earth and Mars. According to him, starships will send 1,000 times as much mass into orbit each year as all other rockets put together. How about the timeline, though? Can Elon beat China to the punch? Elon may have a tendency to greatly underestimate how long tasks will actually take to complete in real life. Elon said he will put people on Mars by 2025 less than 10 years ago. Even while we now know that won't happen, he is still holding out hope that in 2025, he will be able to land at least one of his Starship rockets on Mars. Elon believes he can send that rocket to Mars in three years, even though it hasn't even left Earth's atmosphere as of 2022. And he might be accurate. Following that, he talked of moving right into rudimentary missions to Mars following the first successful landing. That might imply as soon as 2027. Musk appears to be aiming hard for putting people on Mars by 2030 at the latest. His entire worldview is based on the idea that the door to the potential of starting to spread mankind over other planets is about to open. In the four billion year history of the globe, this is the first time that window has opened, and we have no idea how long it will stay open. We must act as quickly as we can as soon as possible to ensure that we don't lose our opportunity, since it can be a long period or it might be extremely short. It's all really cosmic and existential in nature. Elon noted in a recent tweet that he anticipates it would take between 20 and 30 years for human spaceflight to advance to the point of being self-sustaining. However, he is also using a rather astounding population rise in his computation. Then, over a two to three decade plan, we would need to transport an average of about 100,000 people per launch window, which occurs around once every two years in order to meet Musk's time frame goals. Now that's a lot of people. Don't you think? This is truly some Noah's Ark level business. So who do you think will actually pull it off? We've got the utilitarian brute force and dedication of China versus Elon Musk's glowing vision for the future of humanity beyond the Great Filter. Or is this all just high level fantasy? Drop your theories below. Sad to say, but this pretty much wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section below. We'd love to hear your input on this matter, and we'll be responding to a lot of your comments. Before we wrap up, it would mean the world to us if you all pounded the like and subscribe button. Our hearts are always full from your care, enthusiasm, and support. I guess it's farewells for now. Till the next video drop, you all take care.